What's up, folks? You believe that? You, you, hold on. Do you believe that? Man, what's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Beautiful weather out, Colorado, 70 degrees, sunny, absolutely beautiful. And we got some recruiting news to talk about. We're seeing a lot of the unofficial visits happen right now, which is absolutely massive. And and I think I'll get into the overall plan right now with recruiting, but we're bringing in a lot of guys at positions of need right now at the high school ranks. I think we, I mean, it's not hard to beat. It's not hard to beat, but we're going to have a bigger class than like eight guys this next year. And a lot of these guys are going to be on the line, which is what we've been talking about. And we could bring in a bunch of skill guys, I think, in the portal rather easily. It's a little harder to build that elite group up front in the trenches year after year going with the portal. So I think we're taking a little bit more of a balanced approach here. So y'all smash that like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And we're going to go ahead and, and dive into this. Peter, you're absolutely right. We got quarterback TJ Latif there with him or visited yesterday as well. Maybe this turned into a two-day visit. I'm not totally sure, but they visited yesterday, both of them. I know that they were both posting pictures of bowling at uh, at the campus center right there in the middle of campus. Y'all haven't bowled at CU. I'll go ahead and do it. Cheapest beer on, on campus, no doubt. And let's go ahead and get to it. Again, welcome everybody. Smash that like. Good to see some familiar faces in here. And... Uh, some faces that I haven't seen here in a while. So, Peter, thank you for checking in. Eric Morris, great to see you as always. Always keeping me and everybody else in the Colorado community up to date on what's happening on Twitter. I know I can just log in and I'm going to see uh, the 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 most up-to-date news because Eric's already tagged me in it, man. I appreciate you keeping me in the loop. Saeed, good to see you checking in from Norcross, Georgia. And so maybe you're familiar with some of these guys that are here in Florida that we're recruiting. But before we get to Zaire specifically, let me pull up this graphic for y'all. This is courtesy of Buffs Culture on Instagram. Just showing a lot of the visits that we have coming up and as you can see my man mata is a big fan of this he liked it i don't know why i didn't like it i'm sorry i'm sorry but here's the deal we got a ton of unofficial visits coming up and maybe one of these is official y'all correct me if i'm wrong but i think they're all unofficial visits we're targeting positions of need okay let's start with the offensive line zaire addison who this video this live stream is going to be about visited yesterday maybe he's still on campus today elijah melendez a miami commit five a three-star linebacker but this is a guy that is being widely recruited by a lot of big time programs offensive lineman caden strayhorn wide receiver elijah durham quarterback jaron kiwi kiwi psychopolu telly man that was bad I'm going to have to learn that one. I know nothing about him. Cooper Perry, defensive lineman, uh, trade Trajan Odom. And then offensive tackle, Micah DeBose, cornerback, Major Preston. Three-star, Jarquez Carter. He's a defensive lineman, okay? And then we also got Edge, Jesse Harold. So you guys know we need more depth, more guys that we can develop over a period of years in those trench positions and you see here we got two defensive linemen coming to visit three offensive linemen which is fantastic and an edge guy so that's wonderful stuff and we got safety Fahim Delane coming in for the spring game here in just a few weeks and I, I, I love this when you look at the different moves that we've made on 
the staff and personnel. Let's talk about that, okay? Of course, we all know, Phil, all my guys know their assignments. Lo and hold, coaching the offensive line. I'm confident we're going to get a much better offensive line prospect or, or production this year. So we got him, a guy who played in the NFL, who has coached as an analyst at Oklahoma, was previously before that at Ole Miss on the recruiting side and player personnel aspect of things. And so he knows the Southeast region. Oklahoma is great at what they do in building offensive linemen. Guy like Tyler Guyton, right? Originally recruited as a defensive lineman, now could go in the first round here in the NFL draft this year uh, from Oklahoma. So Phil Bullhold has been a part of, of that development, okay? Now, let's talk about George Hegeman, okay? Coming in here as Director of Leadership and Engagement, I believe is his title. But longtime NFL lineman, won a Super Bowl with the Cowboys and, and Coach Prime in the 90s. Also played a little bit in NFL Europe, if if you're old enough to remember that whole thing, which <laughs> which is pretty cool. But a guy that has also oversaw, uh, overseen the whole football program at IMG. And, I mean, just a tank. An absolute tank. And so we got him who knows the offensive line, who I imagine is going to be a part of these visits. Yes, He's more so overseeing culture and different things like that. The leadership, making sure that everybody's communicating, which we need everybody to be on the same page this year. I think it's a massive thing. Uh, but him, along with Devin Rispris, coming in on the recruiting side, the player personnel side with Coach Oldhold, I mean, that's like a really powerful three where I feel like we're going to be able to uh, – it, it's clear. The guys that we're bringing in, they're going to have the ability uh, or they do have – that priority of being able to win talent on the offensive line uh, in, in, in the recruiting world. So I, I think that's great, but let's go ahead and get into it. I've held you guys long enough. Let me get to Zaire himself, okay? So I'll run the highlights as... I get into kind of his scouting report, but you can see he moves really well for an offensive lineman. I think in this video, he said he was 280, but other places I've seen him said that he measures 290. Uh, number 58, this le left tackle, really impressed with his competitiveness, always playing through the whistle. Again, I feel like he moves really well for an offensive tackle, okay? And might need to put on a little bit of weight, of course, but uh, I think that he's a very, he seems to be very athletic, especially for an offensive lineman. So I'll read what 24 7 said about him as we have these highlights roll. Andrew Ivan saying, an enticing offensive line prospect with developmental upside given growth potential and movement patterns, measured roughly six foot, four and a half, 280 pounds. Uh, spring after junior season and is blessed with a nearly six foot ten wingspan. Insane. Has played primarily tackle at the prep level, but ceiling might ultimately be highest at one of the guard spots. Interesting. Still, is athletic enough to protect the corner with improved technique. Fires out of his stance and is quick to initiate contact. Frequently finds himself in control of his body and will seal off run lanes with impressive core balance. Can get caught reaching and lunging in pass sets, but does have the upper body strength to extend the arc when he gets his hands on an assignment. Should be viewed as a potential multi-year starter at the power four level that can play multiple spots up front depending on how the body matures. Will likely need a few semesters in the weight room before he's ready to go on Saturdays, as it is for like 90, 95 of these offensive linemen coming in from the high school ranks. So another really interesting fact about him is that he ran track and wrestled uh, in high school. But look at this. Clocked a 12.84 in a 100-meter dash. <laughs> that is insane speed, I feel like, for an offensive lineman. <laughs> that is uh, pretty crazy to me. So and started at left half for Sumner this past year. Seen as a four-star guy, rated at 24-7 as a 91 overall, number 14 overall offensive tackle, and ranked as the 132nd best player in all of high school football for his class. He'd be a massive get. 
I really hope that his visit went well. And you can see, I mean, the the man, the young man, is is a great athlete at that offensive line position. And uh, I mean, we we've seen this past year. You know, we need we need athletes here. And if we can just snag at least one or two of these guys to play the tackle position, that would be great. I think you're going to see us go after, at least my hope is, is that we bring in at least three or four offensive linemen in this year's high school class because we need to be developing him. And as you guys can see, he also plays a defensive line as well. But it seems like everybody is – projecting him to be an offensive lineman that's what he's being recruited as and you know that that finding good athletes to play on the offensive line is a little bit more difficult than than at the defensive line so we'll we'll have to see but um i think i think you're gonna see us have a bigger class this next year just because guys are we got 31 spots to fill just like you saw in 2022 when he came in here we had essentially 60 or so spots that we needed to fill you saw us bring in like 30 high school guys 30 portal guys it won't be that drastic but uh, i think you're definitely going to see more than eight guys come in here from the high school ranks but Tariq, you're right we better keep that locker room clean especially on these visits and i i i was a little shocked of course we only see a portion of stuff on well off and reach the people whatnot but i'm surprised they weren't disciplined a little bit more with uh, with how that locker room looked like you know that was that was a uh, that was pretty nasty man can't can't have the locker room look like that but yeah ultimately zaire addison we got a lot of competition i think he posted a, a, a photo of all the teams that are kind of within his consideration and it's a big list right now as it should be being this early in the recruiting process but let me go ahead For some reason my list is not clicking okay but right now according to number seven like the warm teams that he's interested in that have interest in him clemson florida state oregon penn state penn state and so yeah we got we got our work cut out for us a lot of top college football programs are going after him other schools that have offered him florida georgia miami nebraska missouri ole miss south carolina tennessee a m ucf ucla usc Al uh no alabama has not offered him but as you can see i mean we're we're gonna have to compete with some of the best programs in the country to get him and uh we'll, we'll just have to see but yeah, y'all let me know your thoughts on on him. I like how he plays. I think he plays with a nice little nasty. As you can see throughout this tape, he really does play through the whistle. And he's not somebody that kind of checks out early and plays. So I, I think all that's phenomenal. I love to see the fact that we're bringing guys in here uh, like this. And between him and maybe somebody... Uh, like Caden Strayhorn, you know, another offensive lineman, Micah DeBose. If we can get a few of these guys, that, that would be absolutely fantastic for the development of the line moving forward. So uh, with that being said, I'll get to some of your comments here for, for a few minutes, but I think this is a great development, again, that we're bringing in a handful of guys on visits from the offensive line group and a defensive line, okay? This isn't you know, coming back last year, we didn't have any results or product to really go from. And there was so much going on with building this new team essentially from scratch that, I mean, I don't remember a ton of visits happening within the spring last year. Do you guys remember that? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. So I think this is a good development as Coach Prime and his staff are getting settled in. It's good to see these these visits happening and i believe that this is more than than what we saw at this point last year so yeah steve you're right him and tj uh that that four-star quarterback i don't really know much about him right now i haven't looked into him but yeah they were they were balling on campus love it <laughs> j rad this is what i th this is what i don't get man 
when did Coach Prime start developing players? It's all about the portal, which is no way to build a program. Man, I just <laughs> – why do you guys always got to be so negative all the time, okay? This is, the, this is what I don't get, man. Since when did Coach Prime start developing players? Okay, are we just going to say that nobody throughout Coach Prime's coaching tenure has gotten better? This is what I don't get. I understand there are some people that aren't going to be all about the portal. I understand it. But to say it's all about the portal, I, I don't think is true. Again, Coach Prime, with some critics, are in like a no-win situation this year because – you absolutely have to win this year. You have to have a winning record. That is the biggest recruiting tool is to win. He wants to win right now when he's got a really good quarterback and some other really good pieces that are going to be off to the NFL next year. Uh, to me, to maximize on what he has right now, it makes sense to double down on the portal this year. I don't think that's what you're going to see as the strategy next year. Again, if we bring in another 40 portal guys, we saw we saw what that happened or wh where that led us this past year. There's only a certain amount of ceiling that you can get to, but I I think I think coach prime is smarter than that. That's just how I see it. Like and I'm not even saying that our high school class is going to be massive, but I'm going to say like I still think it's going to be over like 15 guys. I still think that. So, again, I can understand some people not being fully on board with the strategy, but let's say he did have a, a big high school class this past year. Then it's going to be like, well, he's, he's not, he, he doesn't want to win as much as he can this year, or, you know, he's wanting to take things slow and is willing to sacrifice, uh, you know, Shador and Travis in this window that they have with him. I just don't think that that's totally fair at all. Again, you guys can nitpick. I can nitpick sometimes, but can we stop talking in absolutes like that? That stuff like pisses me off. When did Coach Prime start start developing players? Come on now, man. You're smart enough to look at this thing with some nuance. I it it's just sometimes like that's why it, I'm just gonna stop myself. Yeah develop players in the second year again dude it's like dude if, if you're just pissed off about what's going on here then why do you check in every day like that's <laughs> I, I i don't understand it man no way to build a high school program well Ole miss has done pretty well with it florida state has done pretty well in the portal and again i just think that coach prime despite what some people think actually has somewhat of an idea and strategy that he's trying to implement here. And we're going to have to ride this thing out. But J-Rad, just don't be bitching to me when we win like, you know, seven, eight games this year, okay? Just don't be bitching to me. Because we went and had a portal-centric class this year because we wanted to win. Dude, he does got that dog in him, Sco Buffs Daily. Absolutely. Again, I hope that we can get a few of these guys on the offensive line. Say we bring in three defensive linemen, three offensive linemen, that's six guys. And then you got maybe a couple linebackers that you bring in, that's eight. Maybe bring in a few wide receivers, running backs. I think we'll have no issue bringing in the skill positions. And as you can see, I think Brett Bartoloni is starting to have um, some good momentum with tight ends as well, uh, more so than what we ever saw, uh, strangely enough, with um, Full Metal Jacket guy. Why am I forgetting his name? Tim Brewster. I'm going to need to check him out, Mary. That is, uh, that's cool stuff. Mariota in his prime. I love it. Eric saying, Hegeman spoke today at the podium and mentioned that he didn't want to see what Coach Prime went through and had to help it get fixed. What? Spoke today at the podium and mentioned that he didn't want to see what Coach Prime went through and had to help it get fixed. 
Oh, I mean, just saying that he wanted to see this whole program be a little bit more unified and and all that than it was this past year. I love it, man. I think I think he's going to have a big impact uh, on the program here. Again, him, Rispress, some of the other uh, staff additions that we've made. I'm I'm bullish on. I'm hopeful for. Tremaine coming in here saying, Dave, I read a blog that said Cooper was most likely to hit the portal. What are your thoughts? Cooper played well at the beginning of the year. Yes. And we need we need veterans on this team. I feel much better about the secondary if Coop sticks around. I know that I guess he's been sitting with the safeties and some of these position groups. Maybe he plays a little bit of a hybrid role, but I still feel like he's one of the better boundary corners that we have right now. Again, we'll see what Preston Hodge can do, but he didn't play much on the boundary last year at uh, at, at Liberty. I mean, I think he was like 90% in the slot. So we'll just have to see. I, I think that, one, I'm expecting Cormani to take a significant jump this year. Uh, DJ McKinney, I, I think, is a pretty good prospect as well. But... I mean, you're going to have injuries, and it does help to have guys that have played a lot of college snaps. I hope that he sticks around, and right now I'm expecting him to. Again, sometimes when you got one year left, it it's just not advantageous to, to make that move, especially late in the season in terms of the, the portal season, making that jump in the summer. I think, again, some of these other bubble guys – that people want to speculate about, they would have been much better off leaving this past portal season in December uh, to, to find a spot for them to, to earn more playing time or reps, uh, you know, during that period than they are over the summer. That's, that's just kind of how I feel about it. I think there's a reason why the summer portal season is not nearly as nice as it is in December. Right. Zion saying six and six. I'm totally cool with that. Again, I just want to see an improvement. But I, again, I, I just think it's so funny, man. Like, oh, man, the portal is no way to build a program. Again, like, do you want them to, to have more wins this year? I, I think that it's safe to say that, hey, they'll have more wins this year with bringing in more portal guys than they would bringing in 25 high school guys this year. I just see it that way. Um, but, I mean, people are always going to bitch. That is true, including myself. There, you know, there's there's going to be things that I bitch about, but I I seem to be a little b- bit more okay with just seeing how the whole strategy plans out or plays out over multiple years. I think some of you guys are impatient as hell. Cooper was solid. Maybe he lost his confidence after the Stanford game. Maybe. Maybe he was a little hurt. But also, I, I mean, we all played like shit after the Stanford game. Let's let's be honest. I mean, we did have the defense have some really good halves uh, after the Stanford game. And, again, I thought we played really good team ball against Utah. But that was something that we just never recovered from. And I think having guys come in here – like a George Hegeman is going to be really helpful. Uh, the fact that we got somebody that has dealt with pressure and attention the way that Pat Shermer has dealt with like the New York Giants media for years, this is a cakewalk to him. This isn't anything uh, too, too crazy. I think that it was to the surprise of some, including myself, that this moment was just too big for Sean Lewis. And there was there was dysfunction and fragmentation on this team for a lot of different reasons. And I think that this will be a more unified team from the staff and uh, player standpoint of things. But I mean, let's not let's not kid ourselves. The biggest recruiting tool that Coach Prime has right now is to win this year. And you, you can't have another losing season like you had last year or else this thing's going to lose steam. You need to have a winning season, so you need some veteran players coming in here. 
that can help you a little bit more short term. Maybe their long term ceiling is a little bit lower than if you had focused on high school recruiting. That's I totally get that. But ju just to act like this is some dumbass strategy is something that I don't get. I can see why you would take this approach. Zion saying Tremaine Young, I was on eight and four, but six and six is my newest prediction. Yeah, that's fine. Again, I'm still sticking with my nine wins, but I mean, I've been teetering on it a little bit. Some of that is more projecting out a little bit. Hopeful that we can still fill some of our needs in this summer portal season. We'll, we'll just have to see. Let's get some more D linemen. And hell, I would not complain about another offensive lineman or two. I mean, they were bad. They were bad. They lost their confidence. And uh, thank God that those guys that were overseeing that thing, they're they're gone now. And I I just have more confidence in somebody like Phil Woldholt to get this offensive line right. But, I mean, as Coach Prime said on Tuesday, to paraphrase him, he said the, the offensive line looked like shit today. So uh, who knows? You can't really make too much out of practice. I guess we'll see how the spring game turns out. But, hey, at least uh, we're bigger. <laughs> we're bigger at, at the guard spots, right? We'll still see what happens with the center competition. And don't rule Hank Zelenskis out. Do not rule him out there at the center position. Seems like he's getting most of the snaps alongside Yakiri Walker. I haven't seen Tyler Brown take any center snaps right now. Uh, have you guys seen that? So maybe it really is a two-horse race for this starting center position. And again, I would not be surprised if we bring in another one during the transfer portal because it would be nice to bring in like a 310-pound center, right? Wouldn't that just be nice? Surfer, what's going on, man? Yeah, see, Brian Johnson, thank you. You guys can help me as uh, I can't think of everything at once. Why do people say he doesn't develop? He developed Cameron Silman Craig, Travis Hunter, his sons, even some portal players. I wish they would start, uh, wish they would stop this narrative. Yes, it's, it, it is stupid. It is, uh, again, they're just going to ignore all the information that doesn't prove their point. I was, uh, as a Broncos fan, I was listening to DMAX Kill You With Truth podcast this morning where you, you had people coming in saying, oh, the Walton Penner group, uh, these are going to be cheap Walmart owners, just like the Rockies owners. And I'm like, they've literally spent a shit ton of cash uh, since they bought the team. They've replaced the field all these times. They're building a new training facility. They're doing renovations to the stadium, as well as looking to pay for and build a brand new stadium out by the airport. They were like, fuck it. We didn't trade for Russell Wilson, but we're going to cut him and still give him all that guaranteed money and just move on. And uh, we're going to pay Sean Payton, you know, $18 million a year and all this shit. And then the guy said, well, that, that's all off the field stuff. It doesn't matter. What, what the hell are you talking about? The you guys just want to ignore all the information that doesn't prove your point. That that's really just what it is. So, um, no, I don't think that's true at all, Zion. You see guys like Travis Hunter and Five Stars flame out. Like you got to give these guys some credit for putting them in a situation to where they have lived up to their potential. Um, I, I think that is absolutely something that you have to give them credit for. So. Ah, shit. I just forgot, guys. I got to hop to this client meeting. I got to get out of here. Y'all, smash that like. Keck, what's up? Good luck with everything going on in Arizona. And I will see y'all later. Sko, buffs.